Hey you guys, I'm 7up07. And I'm Nisha. And we're back with another episode of Let's Play Sherlock Holmes, uh, Consulting Detective. Volume 1. Volume 1. And <laughs> we should be getting close to the end of our first case here. Yay! Um, I think we finally just pieced together where everyone was actually murdered. Like the three different people that were murdered and where. So I think we can figure this out now. A ship and a... So, first it was Ebenezer in the tomb, and then it was Weatherby on the way back on the ship, and then it was... Wind... Windbanks. Windbanks. When they got back to London, and we're gonna show the stuff, so... Ramsey. Someone was trying to stop them all along the way. Clearly. Hem and Ramsey... <clears throat> what is the raven and rat? Ooh. That sounds like a brothel. Or a really good bar. Uh, or a really dirty bar. <laughs> we had just come through a rather grueling storm, so I sent my first officer, Luther Tenney, down into the hold to check on the condition of the cargo. He reported back post-haste that Mr. Weatherby was lying dead among the Egyptian artifacts we were transporting. I turned over the helm to Tenney and went below to have a look for myself. And did what you see confirm Tenney's report? Mm. Unfortunately, yes. Mm. Weatherby was lying next to that coffin, or whatever it's called, apparently strangled. Or whatever. I went back to the bridge and put Tenney in charge of the investigation. And what did he uncover? Well, you'll have to ask him for the specifics, because I can scarcely recall the details. Well, okay. you were useful. Well, we already got those, so, uh, yeah. All right, what else do we got? We got to talk to some other people, I think. There's some more peeps? Yeah, but they're all names that I don't think have been mentioned, so maybe they were on the list. Yeah, they were probably on the passenger list, so they're probably going to be fucking useless, but... Um, looks like we only have a few... Oh my gosh, we do get to talk to Porky Shinwell. No yep. fucking way right now. <laughs> oh my god, uh, yes. That makes me happy. Porky Shinwell. My name is Porky Shinwell. <laughs> There was a oh God, of course of you are. in here just a fortnight ago. What mentioned the Eastern Empress? Never seen him before. <coughs> Haven't seen him since. One was a swarthy fellow. Arab, unless I miss my Oh, my gosh. The other was an old English gent. Oh, gent. I overheard him say something about a bird and later caught the name of the ship. Hope that helps you. Care for a drink, yeah? Oh my god, you are a weird guy. Yeah, super glad we got to talk to Porky Shinwell. I mean, at least, you know, he he lives up to his name. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, that's exactly how I would expect someone named Porky Shinwell to act and, like, and look. My name is Porky Shinwell. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, who else is there? Uh, did we talk to... Well, uh, Sir Jasper Meek. Meek? Meek. With an M. Uh, yeah, he was on the list, wasn't with he? With an M. Wait a second. I want to see something. This isn't a list of the... Okay, never mind. I just wanted to make sure this wasn't like... Well, Meek and Murray are both on there, and we should talk to both of them. What about this guy? Um... Disraeli O'Brien? No. What an interesting name. Okay. I was wondering if it was, like, pre-put in here, but I guess not. But it will. Beg your pardon, but could I have a word with you, Sir Jasper? Ah, uh, Dr. Watson, of course. Oh, Watson's actually Are doing something. Are you investigating something. the death of Samuel Sneed? I just finished with him. No, we're interested in James Windebank. Ah, the mummy's latest victim, of course. <laughs> now, who hired Holmes for this one? <laughs> King Tut? Oh, <laughs> jolly good one. Oh, Actually, jolly we don't good, have yes. A client on this one. Eh, just for fun, eh? Well, about the only thing I can tell you is that that mummy has very powerful hands. What do you mean? The trachea was crushed along with one of the vertebrae of the neck. Wow. Death was instantaneous. Snap. But the papers report say that the, there were mummy wrappings found round the neck. Uh, just window dressing. Uh, without question, it was bare hands. The bruises and the way that the vertebrae was crushed leave no doubt about that. 
Thank you very much for your time, Sir Jasper. We're very much appreciative. Uh, not at all, Watson. Uh, you will let me know when you've convicted the mummy. Beg your pardon? Well, so I can perform an autopsy on him. <laughs> it would be most fascinating, don't you think? I can't tell if he's joking or if he actually believes that it was the mummy. <laughs> I think he just wants to perform an autopsy on the mummy. Wait, so can you actually break someone's vertebrae by strangling them and... Uh do it that fast? Apparently, I You don't have know. to have huge and very strong hands to be you able to do that. You have to be very angry also. And strangling a baby. Wh okay. What? <laughs> You'd have to be strangling a baby. Don't strangle a baby. I won't. <laughs> okay. H.R. Murray? Yes. And I believe that's it. Let's talk to this chap. Pettigrew wrote this book over 50 years ago. Oh my and God. there's still nothing better on the subject. Fascinating. Just fascinating. And hey, what can I do for you today, Whitson? What can it's I do Watson, for you, sir? Whitson. Watson. Yes, of course. We're interested in what you may have learned about this mummy case. Oh, so these days it's mummies you're chasing <laughs> down with that fella Helms. It's home. Not leprechauns. That's what I said now, isn't it, Whitson? They're always yes, after me lucky you. charms. Uh, let me show you what I found so far. Uh, this is the bit of linen that was found round the neck of James Windebank. I examined it thoroughly, and it is quite old, perhaps thousands of years. However, it is not the murder weapon. Are you certain of that? Aye. Now, this <laughs> is quite old, but it's not at all strong enough to strangle a grown man. Very interesting, sir. I also found something quite fascinating. Uh, take a look through this glass. Uh, do you see those short hairs on the fabric? They look precisely like hairs. Of course they look like hairs. But what kind of hairs? They're not human hairs, they're dog hairs. Whoa. Now, look at this. This piece of linen was found round the neck of the victim on board the ship. Well, his name was Leatherby or something. Uh, it is also quite old, and on it I found more hairs. What dog hairs? <laughs> no, my dear man, monkey hairs. <gasps> I've not yet been able to identify the precise species, but it's just extraordinary, isn't it? Why? But what do you think it all means? Well, I'm not the sort who likes to jump to conclusions, Whitson. But I can assure you that neither of these bandages were the murder weapons. Well, we already knew that part, but the monkey hair. I guess we've solved our case right there. Yeah, I mean, he was the only suspect, pretty much. Yeah. But, you know, that kind of just confirms it, so... By does the that way, mean it's time to deduce? Yes, it does. And this does have the answers on it, by the way. Oh, it does? So we will get the we will get the right answer, but we will also guess before we uh, put anything in. All right. But that's definitely all the subject matter yeah. to go over. Okay. Well, it's time for your deduction voice, I think. <clears throat> I do deduce. That's actually my Sherlock Holmes voice. Oh. Hear ye, hear ye. Hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's Court stands in order. Mr. Holmes, I understand you've been looking You'll into the mummy mind. murders. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Tell me, then, who was Ebenezer Turnbull's murderer? I believe we're to choose from either our notebook or the directory, Holmes. Very good, Watson. Is it in the notebook? I don't know. Open the notebook. No, he's not in there. Nope. Okay, go back. Oh, you I... can turn the page. No, there's no... Oh. I think you have to add it to the notebook. Yeah, I think so, like too. you can, but we'll just do it this way. So, Tyler, right? Uh, Travis. Travis. Why do I keep thinking his name is Tyler? I don't know. Okay, so Philip Travis. <clears throat> Philip Travis, your, uh, honor? <laughs> <laughs> your majesty? <laughs> I almost said your majesty. And what makes you so certain? What was Travis's motive for killing Turnbull? Uh, is he going to give us a list? I think so, yeah. Aha! Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Travis felt that the tomb of Katibet should be left undisturbed. Turnbull refused to honor Travis's press credentials. That didn't happen, barring him from the excavation site. Thus jeopardizing his job. Turnbull publicly lambasted Travis for questioning the doctor's credentials oh. because of their mutual interest in a Clarissa Weatherby. Well, it's not the mutual interest, because that was Uruburu. Yeah. And it's not that he got barred, because it had nothing to do with his press. Right, he just didn't get to accompany them, right? 
Yeah, but he still went in the end because he was a press thing, I think. Like, they were like, oh, no, we're going to take right, a different it was, student. It wasn't because then, of the press. It was because... Yeah, they took a different student. Yeah. But he still went. Yeah. Yeah. So it's A. Apparently not. What is it? Apparently it's C. What does that mean? I don't know <laughs> when he lambisted Travis for questioning the doctor's credentials. But apparently that's the correct answer. All right, well, we're going to say it, but that's silly because I don't know. <laughs> I don't recall that happening. I also don't recall the first one happening, but it makes the most sense. And what of Andrew Weatherby? Who murdered him? Oh, well, he murdered all of them, obviously. Excuse uh, me while I flip through my directory, your honor. <laughs> flip. <laughs> it's the same person. So, you say Travis <laughs> killed Turnbull and Weatherby? Yes, I believe he did, my lord. Mm. Mm. What yes. was his motive to kill Weatherby, Holmes? Ah! Oh! Well. Weatherby scoffed at Travis's mystical beliefs. The Times was planning to replace Travis with Weatherby as the new Egyptian correspondent. No. Right? No. Ah, uh, while they were students, Weatherby's Egyptology dissertion, dissertation was published while Travis's was rejected. No. Travis was angry that Weatherby was chosen for the expedition instead of himself. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I checked it. I yes. actually didn't realize that Weatherby was a student. I He was ah, a higher student. Then, like a grad. his motive in the book. Now, Holmes, who murdered James Windebank? Mm-hmm. Well, you see, this is where it gets complicated. I just need to go into my directory, Your Honor. Let me point out the name to you, you once will... more. Same you... person. You will never <laughs> see this happening. It was the same man all three times. Travis seems to be quite a busy fellow. <laughs> what made him kill James Windebank? Well, let's find out. Windebank had failed Travis in one of his classes. Windebank did not choose him for the expedition. Windebank ridiculed Travis's pursuit of ancient mysticism as an experiment in the resurrection of the dead. I really wish that was the answer. I do too. That sounds very believable. However, it's B, correct? Correct. It is B. Okay. Excellent job, gentlemen. You have solved the case to my satisfaction. Oh, yes. Court stands in recess. Until next time, of course. <laughs> I wow. Wonder, I wonder what he says if you get it wrong. I don't know. I kind of want to know. Holmes score, My your word, score? Dear Holmes, perhaps we are in the wrong business altogether. If we had been top notch, we should have cracked this case in 26 points. I think I will ring up the university immediately and see if we might enroll in a detective course. Wow. How do you. You're an asshole. I have no idea what that even means or how this game is scored. Oh, it's probably like the less stuff you need, the higher or the lower your score is. You think so? Like the more stuff you click on, the more, you know. But there's no fun in that. I know. And how are we supposed to have known all this stuff if we hadn't clicked on everything? It also might just be timed. Oh, maybe. You never know. I don't know. That seems strange, but obviously we're not going to go for that because we want to try to talk to everyone and find all the funny video clips. And try to talk to Irene Adler. Yeah, well, we're going to keep trying. If they don't have Irene Adler in this game, I'm going to be very upset. They, And if they don't have Toby, I'll be kind of sad, too. I, I'm going to go ahead and say there might not be a Toby in this game. Well, they should have Toby. They should, but that doesn't mean they will. Anyway, so uh, that wraps up this case. We have solved the mystery of the mummy. Unfortunately, it was not the mummy. It was not the murderer. Surprise. But maybe Philip Travis was trying to like turn himself into a mummy. Or... I think he was just psycho. No, but he had like very realistic, you know, goals. No. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I guess that does it for this one, and we're going to move on to the next case in the next video. I don't remember what the case was, but... Uh, uh, it'll probably pop up here in a second. I'm sure. Oh, oh, oh wait oh. here. Well, Watson, I believe this case is solved. And for your information, it was not the mummy. Come, come, home. Wow. I never thought for a moment it was the mummy. Of course not, Watson. However, 
The murderer and the mummy did have one thing in common. What's that? They both were the only ones present at the time of the murders. Except, of course, the victims. You state the obvious, Holmes. Ah, but it is seeing the obvious that is important. First, I saw no reason to assume that we were dealing with more than one murderer. Secondly, the locations of the murders limited the number of suspects. Limited them? The first murder was in Egypt, the second on ship in the middle of the sea, and the third in London. You call the entire populations of London and Egypt a limited number of suspects? No, no, Watson. We had to find someone who was in Egypt for the first murder, on the ship for the second, and in London for the third. Duh! Oh, but of course. According to the newspapers, the Eastern Empress was in Bombay at the time of Ebenezer Turnbull's murder, so that eliminated the ship's crew as suspects. Thus, I needed the list of passengers who boarded the ship at Cairo. It was our visit to Jardine Mason and Company that provided our first critical clue. From it, I learned that Philip Travis was a passenger. Are they just giving us all of the that things Travis that we already... Reported on the first I guess so. ...figured out? He became one suspect. Yeah, that's but what I it seems no like. Clarissa Weatherby, who was also at the scene of the murder in Cairo, was another possible suspect since she appears to have had a bit of I a guess dalliance she with been... Mr. Urubaru there on the high Yeah, scene. her and Urubaru so could have been... So I found her motive for the murder of Weatherby, but not a motive for the murder of the others. Yeah. Then whom did you eliminate? Mrs. Weatherby. Her hands were not strong enough even to open a Why jar... Why did we even bother coffee, reviewing any of let this? ...let alone strangle yeah. a grown man. And what of Travis's motive? It seems that Travis was a student in the Egyptology department at London University and had studied under James do, Windebank. Do we have to... He wanted very badly I, to be chosen well, as a member of the expedition. I don't want to Windebank skip it. Down. I don't either, but this is like... Was chosen and Travis was furious. So there you have... Well, we'll just let it play murder. out. And what is his motive for the murder of Turnbull? Evidently, Travis had written a vicious article questioning Dr. Turnbull's credentials to lead the expedition. Oh, my God. Turnbull's response... Oh, maybe we he didn't hard. read an article Probably fully. Probably powerful enough to drive so? Oh! Travis there was another murder. article very impressive about a guy questioning oh, someone's credentials. Oh. Had hmm. nothing to do with Egypt. Okay, well, now it's over, so... Well, that makes sense, then. Yeah. Okay, I'll buy it. So we just missed one piece of evidence, apparently. That's not bad. But we figured it out. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what this is doing. It doesn't appear to be loading. Anyway, so that is the case of the mystery of the mummy <laughs> that wasn't really about the mummy. The case of the murderous mummy? Yeah, that's the one. So, yeah, we'll move on to the second of three cases in the next video. We will see you guys then. Thank Bye. you for watching. Bye. <laughs>